Hello everyone, Inventor719 here. And as you know, it is the end of school for everyone in university and college. So I am back for the summer, a full eight months for co-op. And if you are already subscribed, that means you should be very excited for my videos. And if you aren't subscribed, then uh, now would be a great time to, to subscribe because I have lots of exciting videos planned for this summer, such as this project I'll be showing you guys today. So if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe for more cool videos to come. So today I'm going to be making a video on this flamethrower here. Now this is a vintage flamethrower. It's from 1940s. I found a brochure online from 1943. Nothing quite like this. There is a few more handheld kerosene ones like that you just put in your hand. Obviously you can see this is a bit bigger. Um, I believe the main purpose of this is for weed control and such like that. It's not a war machine of any type. It's just a household device. But today we're going to try and get it fired up and see what it can do. I'll give you a quick rundown of the different components of it first. So here we go. We'll start at the back end. As you can see, it has a nameplate. It's made by Hawk. And it, all it says really is kerosene. It's kind of hard to see. It's really old again, probably 1943. It has a little pump right here. Now this pump is used to pressurize the tank, which you can read the pressure off of this vintage pressure gauge. Don't know if that's PSI or MPA, but I'm just gonna probably do it about halfway and hope for the best. This is where you fill up your kerosene. It actually still has some in it. This is probably used until not long ago. If any of you guys are antique buffs, you might be able to appreciate this and let me know what it might be worth. I'm obviously not gonna break it because it does have some antique value probably. So basically this is the tube. As you can see, there's a little valve like on your hose. So when this is pressurized, the fuel is pressurized, you will open this valve crack it or whatever then the pressurized fuel comes down this line here and then if you pull back this little protector you can see it a little bit better it goes into the end of the flamethrower where there is a bunch of coils as you can see there's the coils it comes out the one at the bottom goes through all the coils which get nice and hot which vaporizes it and allows it to come out that little nozzle and through the gun. It's really sunny, so there's lots of shade today. So it's kind of hard to show you guys, but hopefully I can fire it up right now. I don't really know how it works, but I have a good idea, so we're gonna go ahead and try and get it working. Of course, during the entire testing, I have this fire extinguisher ready on hand just because this is really old and who knows what could happen. So if it doesn't work the first time around, we may have to do some playing around. But basically, I believe the first step is to get the coils that I showed you really hot. So basically, the fuel will come in, get really warm, vaporize, and get shot out the nozzle, thus a flamethrower. So I saw some models with a wick, but this model here, let me see if I can show you, has a little bucket on the bottom. Right here, there is a steel bucket. Now, I'm not 100% sure what that means, but to me, I picture it being full of like either coals or just fuel and then being a little fire almost underneath the coils. I'm not quite sure, but to simulate a wick, I have a piece of rag here that I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put underneath where the fuel, fuel will be able to hit it. I'm going to actually put it in here, I think, and then we're going to turn on the fuel for half a second, try and get this nice and soaked in fuel light it on fire with a flame and start a little fire in the end of our gun here. So there's the white piece of rag right in there behind the coils. So I'm going to put it on the ground now and back at the tank we're going to go ahead and give it some pressure. So you can't read the pressure gauge but I'll try and tell you what it's at. It's right there if you can possibly see the needle rising. I'm going to fill it up with just a little bit for the first part of the testing. So 
So after pumping for a little while, as you can see, it's at 20. And I believe this is PSI since this gauge is made in the USA. So that's what I've seen a few people online doing. So hopefully that's good up to pressure now. So by cracking the valve, we should be able to get some fuel on the rag. There is the nozzle right there. I'm gonna go ahead and crack the screw and hopefully a little bit comes out to soak the rag we just put in. Oh, there it comes, there it comes. We'll close it off. That came out a lot faster than I anticipated. As you can see, it got all over the ground over there. I might go ahead and uh, soak that rag by hand and then just do that later pressurized. So by cracking it a little bit, as you can see, it just dribbles out onto my rag. So I think that's pretty safe to uh, say it's pretty wet. So I'm gonna turn it off and then we are going to go ahead and light it and let a little fire brew for a little bit. While I still can, I'm gonna close the back half before it gets too warm. Make sure the nozzle is fully closed so there's no backfiring. And let me go ahead and light the kerosene. All right, kerosene is lit. As you can see, there's a little fire in there. Sorry for going sideways. I'm just gonna go ahead and stand back just, just in case. But yeah, it's definitely on fire. The key here is that my tank doesn't explode. So now, according to what I've read online, this should heat up for quite a little bit. Let me back out and show you guys the flame. There it is right there getting nice and on fire. And uh, I'll update you guys when it is up to temperature. All right, so I don't know if you can hear that, but we're definitely getting the sound now. Like it's picking up some steam or something. I do have my fire extinguisher close on hand. As you can see, it spurts out quite a bit of fuel, but also my fill nozzle's leaking, so I kind of I'm scared that the fire might make it back to the nozzle and light the tank on fire, which would be very bad. But I think the fact that it's ma making that noise means it's pretty much ready to be tested. So I'm going to pressurize it a little bit and crack the nozzle. Here we go. So here we go with the flamethrower testing. I'm just going to be pressurizing it and shooting it into the air. So it's still at like 15 PSI, we'll add a little more, get it to 20. All right. I'm going to move it this way a little bit so it's out of the wind. Can you see me on camera? All right, ready? Here we go, opening the, the valve. So there it is. The 1940s flamethrower is functioning, safe, and very, very, very fun to use. I can't think of anything safe to burn with it just because it's so violent. We did get lots of rain, so that's why I made the video today because nothing can catch on fire. But if you enjoyed this video, 
and want to see other cool things like this or if you want to see more types of this flamethrower like shooting it at something please let me know i can do it but please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video on this vintage flame gun i think it's called and as always please like comment and subscribe thanks for watching